So you kind of just said it's, uh, it's, it's carbohydrates that are driving it. I'm going to ask you probably the most obvious question of all, but this has gone beautifully well so far. Is it as simple to start off with as reducing the carbs? That's a great question. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, now, that there, there are, this is a multifaceted approach. I, I um, often will discuss an insulin sensitizing journey. One way I've learned to, to discuss it is a fat cell shrinking journey. Because mm -hmm. as you touch on in the book, it's not the mass of fat that matters most. It's the size of each individual fat cell. So that's how we should look at it. I think that helps us understand the real origins here in a chronic insulin resistant state. It's not as much a matter of losing fat, although that will be the obvious effect. It's that you look at each, you imagine each fat cell and think, I need to shrink that. There are two primary ways to do that, low calorie and low insulin. Both of those will work. This is why you can take someone who adopts a vegan diet, a profoundly nutrient deficient way of living life and eating, and they can reverse, they can improve their type 2 diabetes and their insulin resistance because they've cut their calories so much. Yep. They're essentially just going into this weird fast, yep. eventually leading to nutrient um, deficiencies. Alternatively, you have a low insulin approach. Now, both of those will work. The reason I am so heavy handed about the insulin lowering approach is because we see what happens if a person's fat cell shrinking journey starts with the low calorie step, they will very in, in short order take that foot back. Yes. They will go right back to where they started because if you cut calories, but your insulin is still elevated and that hasn't been addressed, insulin is going to want to be telling all calories in the blood. Insulin abhors energy not being stored in a cell. And so its thematic effect from top to bottom will be to tell nutrients to be stored and locked away in cells. That works perfectly fine for liver, which has an abundant energy supply. Fat cells have an abundant energy supply. Even muscle cells have a lot of gl glycogen and fat. The brain has no capacity to store energy. Thus, it must constantly rely on the energy that comes from the blood. So if insulin's high, but calories coming in is down, yep. then the overall nutrient availability in the blood has gone down. David Ludwig has shown this. Total energy availability in a high insulin state goes down. The brain senses this relative reduction in energy in the blood, whether it's glucose or fats or whatever it would want to be sensing, ketones. It will then say, well, we need to eat because energy is going down. Little knowing that the fat cells, the liver, the muscle, they're all perfectly fed. Can't get to it. Yes, it's just it doesn't know. It can only rely on the energy in the blood, and thus its solution to this is hunger. Yeah. And so that is why every approach that starts with eat less, exercise more, which is the perfect manifestation of the, the, the calorie-based view, which again is real, it works. If you cut calories, it will work. The reason I cannot embrace that view, however, is because... As I said, that approach leads to hunger. Yeah. And so rather than doom yourself to failure yeah. and immediately invite misery by yeah. cutting calories yeah. but not addressing your insulin, flip those around. Yeah. Let your calories be what they may. And if you bring down your insulin, now you will increase your metabolic rate by two to 300 calories a day. You'll start making ketones, which will satiate the brain, and the brain will be thinking, hey, we're all good here. There's plenty of energy. Yep. Let's maybe stop eating, and you'll finally be burning all the fat that you've been storing. Yeah. So that's why, to come back to your question, I strongly advocate that the first thing be control carbs, and then to make it very relevant to your efforts recently, one way to do that, focus on fiber. You know yeah. of my affection for alliteration. So yeah. control carbs, yeah. do so via focusing on fiber. Yeah. Fiber is a very effective way. And then, of course, avoid carbs that come from bags and boxes with barcodes. Mm -hmm. Typically, they're going to be very refined starches and sugars. And by refined, we say basically that means they've stripped out the fiber. That's right. Carbs in nature always come with fiber. Yeah with the exception of dairy, I suppose, that's how we should eat it. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in our, uh, whatever the marketing interests are, that's always been stripped away. Yep. So don't get your carbs from bags and boxes with barcodes, what yep. carbs you are eating, eat them, don't drink them. Yeah. We've kept all that fiber intact yep. and thus focus on whole fruits and vegetables. And if a person just takes that one step mm -hmm. and fills in any gap of hunger with as much protein and fat as they'd like, yep. They're cooking with gas. Yeah, Professor, it's great advice, Ben. Professor Tim Noakes says, I've yet, there's one thing that everybody that is overweight or has type 2 diabetes has in common. Guess, Steve, and I'm like, and I'm like, 10 minutes. 
you've, you've probably never heard of Rumpelstiltskin in the UK. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, so it was well. like that. I was like, uh, guess this, guess that. And he went, no. Every single person I've ever met that's obese or type 2 diabetes is driven by hunger. Yes. Driven by hunger. Wake up hungry, have to eat. H have carbs. Insulin grabs the sugar, crash. Hungry, hungry, hungry all yeah. day. Yeah. So th th that's why I'm 100% I'm with you. That It is not about calorie restriction. Well, that's and I appreciate your efforts with regards to addiction. What people... I, I, one of the things, uh, uh, with all this engagement I have on social media, one of the things that riles up the antagonists the most is to suggest that there is such a thing as carbohydrate addiction. Mind you, there is abundant evidence on this topic. It's not like I'm speaking... Uh, you know, just out of out of the wilderness yeah, yeah, yeah. here, with, uh, without any basis. Unfortunately, the one thing humans are always addicted to is carbohydrate. Yep. That is the common denominator. No one is sitting around on a Saturday night craving a plate of bacon and eggs while they're sitting down to turn on the telly or and broccoli. watch a movie. <laughs> or broccoli. Never. never. No one is thinking, I need to steam some broccoli right now. Well, that's going to hit the spot. Yeah. No, never. Yeah. Always it is something that is sweet and gooey or yeah. salty and crunchy, yeah. and it will have absolutely refined starches in it. M it may have some fat added in too just to really take it up to yeah, an 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but well, even still, that I, will be an added... I call it the taste bud trio. They add the fat, the sugar, the salt together. Now, yeah. we know salt on its own for most people isn't a problem. We know fat, regardless of what you've pre-labeled it, saturated or whatever, isn't on its own a problem. But That's put right. the three together, and we've got all the biological pathways from helped by Stephen Whitley, who was a, a scientist at, mm -hmm. at Nestle, and, and in how that trio together that never happens in nature makes the brain go wild. And that is why I always maintain that whenever you meet somebody overweight, you have to, the first thing you do is make them realize it's not their fault. Yeah, it's I totally agree. It's not their fault. Totally agree. It's the, 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 the big food companies have found this trick over the last 60, 70 years to make you addicted yes. to their produce. But then again, to even pour fi uh, gas on the flames, they're told, eat less, exercise more. Yeah. They're doomed Making to it fail. Your fault. Yeah, I mean, even you can't and nowadays in the in the in the social media space, people are invoking principles that bodybuilders will use to cut, and they'll say just focus purely on protein and and low carb, uh, and and sorry, and cut everything else, high high protein and fiber and nothing else. That works for the most disciplined among us. For the rest of us, we have to have a, a little fat in there. Now, I'm an advocate of protein. I'm an advocate advocate of fiber. But the more we continue to vilify fat, yep. we're taking steps back.